Hi, y'all. In this video, I'm going to talk about an article appearing on CNN about gun policy. Uh, it is an article written by Daniel Webster, who is the director of the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Policy and Research and professor of health policy and management at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Howdy there, Dr. Webster. Uh, I'll be with you in just a moment. Anyone who follows my channel for any length of time will probably be aware that I'm very much in favor of an individual right to keep and bear arms. Um, one of the difficult things about being the so-called gun rights advocate or gun rights activist is that I have to frequently deal with the gun uh, control enthusiasts, or as I generally call them, gun control fetishists. And one of the difficulties in dealing with them is that they uh, categorically are either explicitly, overtly lying or have such a reckless disregard for facts that they might as well be overtly lying. Uh, it, it just seems to be uh, true of people on that side of the argument. So, Dr. Webster, I read your article on CNN with much interest, and I have to say I was profoundly unimpressed uh, with the way by which you are misleading people. And I'm going to fisk this. I'm going to take you through it bit by bit and, uh, and show you, or show uh, everyone else, I don't know if you'll watch this or not, how it is that you are misleading people. And given your education and uh, what it is that you do, I find it difficult to believe that these are all just inadvertent uh, accidents. In other words, I think you're a liar, is what I'm saying. Okay, <clears throat> by the way, just as a personal note here, I tend to think that whenever there's a mass killing in the United States or anywhere really, people like you, uh, Dr. Webster, are fucking ecstatic. You are happy that it has happened because then you get to stand up and go, Ah, look, we're right! Or, oh my god, I get to seize upon this and, and bring attention to my pet cause. But, <clears throat> that's just a personal opinion. Maybe you're different. Once again, Americans are shocked and saddened by an unspeakable act of gun violence. This is just empty rhetoric. It isn't an unspeakable act of gun violence. It is a very speakable act of gun violence. We can talk uh, quite seriously, quite directly, and quite honestly about the Holocaust, and I don't think it could be gainsaid that six million deaths are anything like on par with nine deaths. And if we can talk about Million, six million, or you know, the whole Second World War, you know, 50 to 100 million people, then we can certainly talk about nine people who were shot and killed in South Carolina. Nine innocent people who attended Bible study at the historic Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina, will not return to their, uh, their loved ones, and the community will be forever changed. The community will be a forever changed, but it's just empty rhetoric. Uh, that is true every moment of every day. There are decisions being made all the time that change the future, and you can't go back and unchange any of it. Uh, it, it sounds nice as a poetic, oh, I, I, I'm touchy-feely and I care, but when you actually read it, it it's, it's meaningless. Uh, in a nation with a gun-related homicide, a, a gun homicide rate that is nearly seven times higher than the average of other developed countries, which have much stricter regulations, and that's a, that's a hyperlink to a study, which doesn't actually say what Dr. Webster says that it says. Here, I'm going to help you, sir. Uh, the, you, you wrote, in a nation with a gun-related homicide rate, it's nearly seven times. The, the article, I'm sorry, the study to which you cite shows that it is the gun, the gun related homicide rate is 20.5 times that of the average of these other nations. And it wasn't developed nations, it was rich nations. Just so you know. Uh, these are not identical terms. Uh, these are not synonyms for one another. Um, the all too regular experience of mass murder committed with firearms in America is, in, I'm sorry, in American is tragic and senseless. Well, better that than it being perpetrated in Spanish. I'm just fucking with you. I know that's a typo. But anyway, so you say uh, that study says nearly seven times higher than the average of other developed countries. As I mentioned, um, it says that our gun-related homicide rate uh, for the year in question was 4.1, uh, and that for other countries it was 0 0.2. If you divide the one by the other, you get 20.5. Uh, but let's go Let's go look. It says so nearly seven times higher. Um, in 2003, which is when th this study is focusing on, is in 2003, the overall homicide rate in the United States was six per 100,000, driven by the overall firearm homicide rate of 4.1 uh, per 100,000. Now, um, you're, you're citing to uh, research, but it is shit research. Neither of those numbers is correct. So, uh, it, look, this isn't, this isn't terribly difficult to do in 2015 to look, you know, for the average person who's educated up through, like, the fifth grade to be able to count up the number of dead bodies, one little, two little, three little corpses, five little, six little, seven, which is what we do every year. 
We count all of the murder victims, one little, two little, three little victims. That's really what we do, state by state. And then count up all the people in the country, find out what its growth rate is, and then you can estimate from year to year. So in 2003, the population of the United States was approximately 290,110,000 people. The number of murders in 2003 was 14,465. Divide one of the other, you get a rate of 4.986 per 100,000. That's the overall murder rate. Now when you look at the gun murder rate, there were 9,659 gun murders in 2003 for a gun murder rate of 3.329 uh, per 100,000. Now, one of the, one of the uh, little rhetorical devices, rhetorical tricks of gun control fetishists is they'll talk about these big differences. Yes, um, they are big, but within a certain scale. That is to say that the, the numbers that change most often uh, because you're dealing with a rate that's four, four decimal something per 100,000, the changes are happening in the millionths place. So it's uh, people hurt per million residents. And if it's, uh, so if it's like 4.1 one year and then 4.3, they go, oh my God, it's been a big increase. You're like, yeah, uh, of like a couple people per million residents. So, you know, um, they talk about Missouri. Missouri has about six million residents. Uh, they have a gun. Uh, they have a murder rate of about 6.1 per 100,000. So to get from 6.1 to 6.2, you have to kill six people. It's one per million. And they have six million people. It's about six people you have to kill. So if it's 6.1 this year and 6.2 the next, you'll have uh, six, you'll have six extra people killed. About six extra people killed that next year, and they'll call that a big change. It's so just just to be clear here. They will talk about things that are changing in the millions and the ten million, the millionths and the ten millionths place as being these big changes. Okay, they're changes, but uh, they're not that big. I mean, that's why it's happening six decimal uh, places in, seven decimal places in, occasionally five decimal places in. Okay, so uh, that's in 2003. You may not have noticed, but we now live in 2015, which is, I'm told, about 12 years different. Now, 2013 is the last year for which we have complete data on murders in the United States. Uh, we have preliminary data for 2014. Preliminary data from 2014 indicates that the violent crime rate to include murder dropped by an, about another 4.5% uh, from what it was in 2013. Whether that will shape up in the fullness of time after all the data is uh, coll uh, collected and analyzed, I don't know. But as it stands right now, according to the FBI, uh, for 2014 is projected to be about 4.4% lower than what it was the year before. Itself, uh, a slight... Anyway, so 2013, the population of the United States was 316,500,000. Uh, the total number of mur murders was 12,253 for a rate of 3.871 per 100,000 residents. And the gun murders were 8,454 for a rate of 2.6998 per 100,000 residents. Okay, so let's get back to uh, your homily, I mean your article. We should not have to accept these often preventable acts of violence. About 11,000 homicides committed with firearms per year, that's a link, or about 30 a day as our fate. Um, this is a very interesting way to go about rounding off. If I'm going to use the scale of error that you use, then it would be just as true for me to say that there were X many homicides in the United States by firearms, and precisely zero homicides by any other cause in the United States in the last 20 years, when you get to be that much off in your rounding. It hasn't been near 11,000 gun homicides um, in the 2000s. The closest we got was in 2005, where it was 10,220 uh, something, something like that. Actually, you know what? I have it here. So in 2001, um, there were 8,890 uh, 8, firearms uh, homicides, 2002, 9,528, 2003, 9,659, 2004, 9,385, 2005, 10,100, uh, 2006, 10,225, 2007, 10,129, 2008, 9,528, 2009, 9,146, 2010, 8,874, 2011, 
8,653, 2012, 8,897, 2013, 8,454. You might have noticed a trend. It went up for a little bit, and then it came down precipitously. So um, this guy's talking about, uh, he's adverting to research where they overestimate the gun homicide rate by something like 130%. Uh, they, they don't overestimate it. They just, they just make it up. It's not possible to get that number if you actually count the number of people in the country and the number of people who were murdered in the country in a given year. You just have to manufacture this data from somewhere. Someone does. Maybe these people were just misled. Who knows? Um, so about 11,000 uh, people. So when it's 8,400 people, that's approximately 11,000. How this works. What you learned in grad school or undergrad school, Dr. Webster, Dr. Webster when you were studying public health, um, the math classes you must have taken have profoundly failed you, sir, if you think that it is permissible to round 8,400 off to 11,000. Or even if you think it's permissible to round 10,200 off to be 11,000. Where are you conjuring up these nearly 3,000 extra corpses per year? This isn't a joke, sir. These are real people's lives who weren't taken, who are still alive, who you are claiming are murder victims. So, why are you doing that? You don't need to do that, by the way. 8,400 deaths is bad. Not as bad as 11,000 is bad, but it is still bad all the same. You don't have to make shit up, you don't have to lie, and you don't have to use shitty data to argue that there, is a, that there exists some kind of problem that needs to be resolved. There is a minor problem in the United States with gun violence. It's not a huge problem. Remember, the differences happen in the millionth decimal place. So, it's there. It's a problem. It needs to be dealt with, but it is not a huge problem. Moreover, it's not a problem that's like uh, uniformly distributed through the United States. It isn't. It happens in about 15 cities. That's what drives this problem. So, uh, if, if you, well, if you really wanted to look at what's the driving force there, you need to do a little bit more than talk about the United States Journal. Look at those 15 or 20 specific places that drive most of the murders and figure out what's different there than the rest of the country. So, um, all, those, all the victims are sometimes chosen at random. Acts of violence are not random. They occur due to a number of factors that we understand better as a, as a result of scientific studies. While the data are unclear about whether access to a gun causes violence, the data, is not un the data are not unclear. There is no causal link between access to firearms and, uh, and violence. One does not cause... The access to a firearm does not cause violence. There is no doubt about that. There is no causal relationship uh, even remotely hinted by the data. It is clear that for individuals with a history of violence, substance abuse, and criminal behavior, having access to firearms increases their risk of committing lethal violence. That fact is true because another fact is true. This is just this is what it looks like when you you crowd a conjunction. You can come up with anything that you want. So if the base th if the baseline things you're going to throw into the con conjunction are true, um, for example, uh, I could rewrite this to say it is clear that individuals with a history of violence, their risk of committing uh, in increases their risk of committing lethal violence. If you're engaging in violence, the chances that it's going to become lethal are increased over that if you weren't engaging in violence. And because that fact is true, all the other things you attack onto it. Uh, are also true. So substance abuse. If you're violent and impaired while you're doing it, it's still an increased risk of lethal dam of lethal uh, violence. If you have a propensity for violence and are engaging in violence, uh, and you're using substances and engaging in criminal behavior, which sounds redundant. I don't know of any um, history of violence that wouldn't be non-criminal, unless by violent, you know, you have a person who gets attacked a lot and they just defend themselves. I guess that that could be the case. Anyway, so. Uh, history of violence, substance abuse, and a criminal. Yes, that, be, because it's true that, that the history of violence in and of itself increases the risk of death. Those other things that you tack on to, you know, here, here's, a, here's something else I can mention. Um, it is clear that for individuals with a history of violence, petting cats, drinking water, and enjoying long walks on the beach increases their risk of committing lethal violence. That will be true because of the history of violence, sir. I know, or I think, at least I hope, uh, having procured a graduate degree, you're aware of this. Um, 
you are just shining people on. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> uh, many people believe that keeping guns from dangerous people simply doesn't work. Who, please name some names. Are you talking about members of like uh, Mara Salvatrucha, uh, the Galloping Goose, uh, Serenios? Who are you, who are these people who quote uh, who do not quote believe that keeping guns from dangerous people uh, end quote doesn't work? Who are the people who believe that if if a violent person doesn't have a firearm, they are a, if, they, if they don't have a firearm, they're safer to be around than if they do have a firearm. Who are these people? Please name these uh, imagined to exist people. Or uh, maybe restrict what you're claiming. Like if you're talking about MS-13, blood scripts, things like that, perhaps it's true, but in the general population, gun owners, non-gun owners, even among general criminals themselves, uh, I don't know of anybody who believes that keeping guns from dangerous people is ineffective. What you are confused about, sir, what you are misrepresenting uh, to your audience, sir, is the distinction between someone saying the, uh, the course of conduct you're proposing doesn't in fact keep these weapons out of the hands of dangerous people. So uh, you hear that and you translate, oh, you're saying so if, they, if we don't give guns to, to dangerous people, it has no effect. That's not, what, that's not what's being said. So just to be clear, the, the argument from my side of the aisle that you're getting is your proposed policies do not result in, in firearms being out of the hands of dangerous people. That does not mean that uh, we are in favor of dangerous people having firearms. It does not, it does not mean that we believe that uh, keeping firearms from them is an ineffective policy to reduce their danger. It clearly is effective if you can, in fact, keep the guns out of their hands. But I again point out, nothing that you propose, and none of the laws that any of your idiot friends in Congress propose, have a result, have that as a result. It just doesn't happen. They've swallowed the gun lobby's Kool-Aid, that criminals don't obey gun laws. I'm sorry, do you want to propose that that is false? Are you claiming that, that criminals do obey gun laws? I mean, you're saying that I've swallowed the Kool-Aid um, by thinking that criminals don't obey gun laws. Do you really want to propose that there is a, that criminals do obey gun laws? You are free to believe that if you if you'd like. I will point out that criminals, by definition, aren't particularly interested in following the laws. Now, perhaps some of them will follow the gun laws, some of them won't. I do notice that the people you tend to worry about uh, when they're using these firearms are already breaking your law. But on on that backdrop, you're still saying that there's. It's that I'm just suckered in by being, I'm brainwashed into believing that violent criminals don't obey laws that prohibit them from being violent. I, I think I have the better of that argument. Uh, so gun control laws needlessly burden law-abiding gun owners without doing anything to reduce violence. Uh, well, you know, if you go watch the Senate hearings, uh, you can listen to, I can't remember the U.S. Attorney's name now, talking with Senator Ted Cruz. Uh, Ted Cruz asked him a very simple question. Are you aware of any of these studies that have as a conclusion that this or that gun policy, this or that gun ban, resulted in a net reduction in the number of people shot, the number of people killed, the number of weapons used, number of rounds fired, and that uh, the U.S. Attorney's inner coward came out and he could not just look, look at the man in the face and say, no, there is no such study. What he said is, well, you know, there was some suggestion in one of them that perhaps... Uh, at the margins it might have had... Look, the answer is no, it doesn't exist. That study, uh, the ones relevant here, commissioned by the Department of Justice, which is the ones they were talking about, they did three, uh, that study, none of them says that this gun ban did fuck all to stop one person from being shot and killed. Doesn't say it. Does not say it anywhere. It does not say that there's any statistical, statistical reason whatever to suppose that it stopped a single person from being shot or stopped a single person who was shot from being shot multiple times, or it stopped a single um, number of rounds being fired, or it stopped the number of uh, guns being used. It did nothing. Uh, this is not true. Okay, so you do want to say that it is, that, that, gun, that if you pass gun laws, uh, violent criminals will say, hey, there's a gun law, I'm not going to carry that gun. Research shows that actually gun laws supported by the vast majority of gun owners are effective at reducing homicides. 
There is research that says that. Unfortunately, there's not any good research that says that, but bad research is still research. When Connecticut adopted a law requiring all handgun purchasers to obtain a federal uh, to obtain a permit from local law enforcement contingent upon the applicant passing a background check and completing safety training, homicides with firearms were lowered by 40% in the 10 years following the law's implementation. Conversely, when Missouri repealed a similar law in 2007, its homicide rate with firearms increased by 25%. Here we're going to measure things differently because that would be advantageous to Dr. Webster's dishonest claims or his dishonest uh, representations. So the link here is the lowered by 40%, and remember the conditions there were during the 10 years following the law's implementation. Now it is of course true that uh, in the 10 years following that law's implementation, the crime rate, the murder rate, like the rest of the crime rate in Connecticut dropped. That fact is true because other facts were true, namely it was doing that already. But uh, I just happened to have jotted down some numbers. So in 1990, in Connecticut, there were 166 firearm homicides for a rate of 5.1 per 100,000. In 91, 198. That's a, that's a year year on year increase. So from 91 to 92, I'm sorry, 92 it was 166. So in in 91 it went up to 198 and then back down to 190 to 166. In 93 it went up to 206. In 94 it went up to 215, and then it did some other things. Uh, so in 95, it dropped to 150. Then they implement the policy. 2000, I'm sorry, 1996. It goes back up. So the year following the implementation of this policy, the murder rate goes back up. Uh, it went up by 2%, uh, 0.2 percentage points. So the population in Connecticut's about 3 million. So that's about six extra dead. Uh, you know what? I can just do this. 158 people in 1996 were killed. And then in 2005, it was down to 105 for a rate of 3.0. And in 2013, it's 86 uh, for a rate of 2.4 per 100,000 resident. So just to recapitulate, um, it went up, then down, up, then... It, it, if you look at state-by-state state statistics, it normally look, looks like a bit of a sawtooth. But uh, if you take a running average, then you can see that the, uh, the the trend was already downward. Just like all crime categories across the country, uh, violent crimes in particular, have been doing for the last 20 years. They've uh, been, been slowly dropping year on year on year with some some variation here, some variation there, but the general trend over the last couple decades is that it's down. In particular, the violent crime rate's down by, it's uh, like 60% of what it was in, in the early 90s. It's down quite a lot. So, the good... Uh, public health doctor here, who seems to think that that it's false that criminals break the law, says, conversely, when Missouri repealed a similar law in 2007, its homicide rate went up uh, by 25%. I'm sorry, its homicide rate with firearms went up by 25%. He seems to vacillate on this a little bit, so I'm not going to put too much stock into it. But in Missouri, in two, okay, uh, so in 2007, they dropped it. Uh, they changed their law, and uh, there were 385 murders in 2007 for a murder rate of 6.5 per 100,000 residents. In 2008, there were 456 murders for a rate of 7.7 .7, uh, per 100,000 residents. That is, that, that was a pretty big, big jump. In 2009, it went down to 387. So it went right back to what it was. So a rate of 6.5, you're off by two people. And in 2013, just like pretty much everywhere else in the country, it is uh, 371 for a rate of 6.1. Uh, 6 6.5 in 2007, 6.1 in 2013, the last year for which we have complete data. Now, of course, it is, uh, it's true that it went up uh, the year following, but when you go look at states and they pass major legislation on fundamental liberties, you very often see a jump in the murder rates. Uh, and violent crime rates uh, throughout that throughout that state. Uh, not always, but ju you do see it rather often. So, okay, uh, the trend in Missouri for a little bit before is 2004 is 354 murders, a rate of 6.1. In 2005, it was 402 murders for a rate of 6.9. In 2006, it was 368 six point, for a rate of 6.3. And in 2007, it was uh, 385 for a rate of 6.5. So it was already on the upward trend 
And then precipitously, well, I won't say precipitously, but in 2013, it's back down to where it was a decade before. So that it went up for uh, a year, then down, and then up, and then down, and then up. And then, but if you take the running average over the last decade, it has actually, uh, it, it, did, it did rise up, but now it's back down. One of the, one of the confusions here is uh, precedence and cause being confused. Uh, the fact that one thing precedes another means that in some sense they might, that they're in some sense related. Uh, they may be related in the temporal sense, but it doesn't mean they're related in any causal sense at all. Um, so that's one of, one of the, uh, the reasons. And that's whenever you listen to public health data, uh, particularly about things that aren't health issues like uh, bullets, uh, wounds, or a health issue because of the patch up by surgeons, but actual, the shooting of a gun is not a health, a health thing, unlike, say, a contagion or a disease. When you think about public health, uh, think about disease and whatnot, but here, when they talk about crime and whatnot, you know, outside of their, outside of their wheelhouse, they use a whole bunch of loosely affiliated uh, concepts like, it'll be a gun-affiliated murder. Uh, well, okay, gun-related, gun-affiliated, what does that mean? Well, in some cases, it, it simply means that a murder happened on property where someone on that property uh, either currently or in the past at some time had owned a firearm or in some places it's even more expensive than that they or one of their neighbors either currently or at some time in the past had owned a firearm um, it's like when they talk about the the, sh the school shootings that have happened after Sandy Hook and they'll come with this like big number and you go look at it and well this was three blocks away uh, this happened at midnight. That's not a school shooting. Yeah, it happened technically on school property, uh, but that doesn't make it a school shooting. When they say a school shooting, they want you to think about teeny tiny kids being slaughtered en masse inside of a school, students being there, being shot. But when they actually say school shooting, uh, only rarely do, is that actually what they're talking about. Very rarely is that what they're talking about. Fortunately, they don't happen all that often, though they, they unfortunately do happen. But as I started out this video by saying, and I'll end it by saying here, uh, doctor, you and your confederates are seemingly incapable of representing a series of reported facts, and if anyone checks behind you, having those facts be borne out. You can't do arithmetic. You can't do averages. You can't accurately count the number of dead bodies. You, you, I, I'm very curious to know what it is, other than lying to people or misleading them, inadvertently perhaps, I don't believe that, but it could possibly be true that you're just a you're just a, a dope. I want to know what it is you're good at doing other than wasting other people's money. You don't seem to have any particular talent for doing anything honest. Perhaps, uh, perhaps you do. I don't know. Have a great day.